Hello, my name is Alicia Drake and welcome back to Coffee and Conversations. Our goal is to create transparency in the world of real estate and to expose the hidden nuances that are typically only privy for agents and brokers. However, today, since we are just right around the corner from Thanksgiving, I thought I would do a totally different show. So I've invited my friend, Jeffrey Saad, to come onto the show. He is a world-class chef restaurateur and one of the founding agents for Compass and Beverly Hills. Nice to be here. I'm so happy to have you. And ready you. to feed you. We could talk real estate all day, but we might as well do it with a full stomach. Yes, I like that. Let's yeah. do it. So um, we're going to make a little harissa chutney today. And it's a cranberry sauce, right? Everyone knows that traditional cranberry sauce mom used to make, right? But this is a little bit of a twist, as you're going to see. So we've got about a cup of water here simmering. I'm going to pour in a couple cups of cranberries. And remember, a recipe is like anything else in life. It's a starting point, but then you kind of massage it to meet your needs, right? So to meet my needs, I said, well, you know, I love mom and I love cranberry sauce, but I want to spice up the holidays a little bit. So this is a harissa cranberry sauce. Harissa is like one of my favorites. I think it's in a tube because I want to brush my teeth with it. I mean, it is so amazing. <laughs> it's a classic North African paste of cumin, coriander, and caraway seed. Caraway is, you know, that rye bread spice, at least that I grew up with that I loved. And uh, bird's eye chilies, so it's very spicy. Sometimes they put a little tomato in it. So the recipe, I typically say, oh, put about a tablespoon. But for me, I'm going to put more in that because I like the heat. But again, start off with just a little bit like this. So it's spicy. Yeah, it's really it's spicy. spicy. And then you can taste it. You can always add more, right? But it's better to, to add more than have it be too spicy. And then even though I'm not a huge sugar guy in general, right? I like to limit the sweets and the sugar. But it's the holidays. You need to treat yourself. And sweet is a perfect balance for heat. So we're going to add some sugar to it as well. All right. How much sugar is that? It's about half a cup. Half so, cup. so far we've got, if you want to take some notes, we had half a cup of sugar, a cup of water, two cups of cranberries. And then I'm going to do a little bit of fresh mint. Again, if you only have dried, use dried. But I'm going to do some fresh mint. And the harissa, you just use like approximation to like taste of how spicy or less spicy you want it to be? Exactly. Like if you say, I mean, a half a tablespoon is going to be very mild. Okay. I put in probably a tablespoon and a half. All right. So we're going to give that a stir. We're going to crank it up and let it boil. And what's nice is don't worry if you add a little too much water or not enough because you can adjust. But I always put a little extra water because then as it boils, you're combining those flavors. So you don't mind cooking a little longer. It's called reduction. It concentrates flavors. It brings all the flavors together. Then here's another little kitchen hack for you. First of all, this is my flavor laboratory over here. I've had a million ways of organizing spices. I have finally fallen in love with this. I get to feel like I'm creating little potions, but I have them all conveniently right by the stove. The key to cooking with spices, okay, is they are oil soluble. So when you just drop them in liquid, you're getting like half the impact. And if you use whole seeds, all their flavors encapsulated in that seed. So it's just sitting there ready to burst out. So if you buy ground spices, totally fine. But if you can do whole spices, better. A lot of times I'll grind them. But in this case, I like the idea of a few flecks of seeds in the sauce. So I've gotten this pan hot. So we're going to toast them. That brings their oils to the surface and leaches out their flavor. And you know how you know when they're done? Do you smell it? Oh, that's delicious. As soon as you oh smell my... it, they're toasted, wow. you're done. That's then we're going to throw those in. That little hack, we the oh. difference having this thing be perfumed versus like, huh, what's in there? I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, it, it takes it up a whole other notch. All right, so as this is simmering away and coming together, we'll decide what we want to do with it. Oh, salt. Remember, salt is so important. My aunt's like, I never cook with salt. I'm like, that's why your food never tastes good. You have to have salt. But, you know, I say salt's like makeup, right? If I have the perfect amount of makeup right on right now, you don't notice it. I just look better, right? But if you can go, wow, you've got this and this, then I probably put too much. Salt's the same thing. You want just enough to where it's going to make the harissa and the cranberries play nicely together. It's going to bring all their flavors together. Again, a taste and adjust. I always say by the time you're serving your guests, you're full because you've been tasting tasting, tasting the whole way through. That's how you learn how much of things to use. That's how you untether yourself from the recipe by, you know, tasting and playing around. So we'll have that much salt to start and then you and I will taste it in a few minutes and see if uh, we want to adjust it. But this is going to simmer down and now you've got a couple options. You can simmer it just briefly and have a sauce. You could put it in the blender or in your little bullet and have a sauce. Or you could reduce it down more and let it be a little bit chunky. That's why I call it like a chutney. 
So it's really what you're in the mood for, what you want to do with it, and it, it's totally your call. And this is killer too, because like we all know the best part of the holidays, Thanksgiving, is leftovers, right? So this is your killer turkey brioche and it sandwich. it smells amazing right now. It is oh, so fragrant. Right? That is oh, the cloud that we like to that live in. That's my kind of weather. Delicious. Yeah. So you're getting, you know, and again, it's like you got to kind of mind taste through it, right? I'm saying, okay, there's sugar, sweet, so I need heat. But if I've got sweet heat and the acidity of the cranberries, I need something to kind of brighten it up. Like a piece of lemon on an iced tea, we're going to add that mint and that's going to balance that heat. Amazing. Is this a, a, a recipe you created yourself or how is it inspired? How did you come to this? Yeah, this yeah, great question. Collection. It's like everything to me, most things start with like, something that means something to you, right? You grow up and you've had cranberry sauce, you know, for a million years, right? But it was always like, okay, you know, I love it more because it makes me, you know, I always say food's an excuse to have everyone at the table that you love. Yes, you want the food to be great, but it's about being together, right? So there's always a memory attached to a flavor, but then I always say, all right, how do I amp this up? How do I make it mine? How do I make it fit this moment, this holiday, this meal that I'm doing? So I, I love heat and I love spices. There's a difference between spicy and spices, right? Spicy is chilies, capsaicin, but spices are cumin, coriander, all these great flavors that, that just really light up your mouth. So I said, how do I take a traditional sauce and make it interesting, make it a little spicy, make it a little fun, and that's how it evolved. And then I just started playing around. And then my Mexican restaurant in San Francisco, I used to do a green chili chutney on seared scallop tacos, and that was this great sweet heat. And so oh, then I thought, well, that was a hit and oh that was gosh. kind of fun. So let's yeah. make that Thanksgiving-y with some cranberries and there you go. Wow. But that's what I love about cooking is, you know, it's not a very expensive way to play and learn and grow and love because it's, it's just food. And even when it doesn't go quite right, it's still edible. Yeah. You know? It's creative. Since we both are very in love with cooking, and we're both real estate agents. Yes. There's, they're kind of like distant cousins. They kind of relate to each other, the way you cook, the way you See, that's a true food estate. person. She gets it. You know, it, it's really true, right? It's true, right? I always say a great meal and a great escrow are really kind of the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. What makes a great meal is just like what makes a great escrow. You have to think ahead, right? By the time you come to my house for dinner and sit down, I've already mentally cooked the whole meal. I've mind tasted the flavors, so I've come up with the menu by tasting it in my head, you know, like I was talking about that sauce. But then also, I've gone through every step, right? Like I've already in my head with my cappuccino in the morning, I've already gone, all right, I'm gonna have the risotto out. Oh, so I need my stock. I'm gonna need the stock by the stove. Oh, but the stock has to be simmering so it's ready for the risotto. I walk myself through every step mentally. So when people are here and we got a glass of wine and apron and there's a million people, they're like, why are you so relaxed? I'm like, because I've done it in my head 50 times before tonight. Real estate's the same way, right? What are the ingredients? Who are the players, right? What kind of age am I working with? What kind of buyers do I have? Huh, these buyers, just like a spice, are, don't seem very trusting, right? So I gotta be ahead of the game. I gotta make sure we have that 9A report ordered early. I gotta make sure those disclosures are clean and thorough because I know this is the kind of buyer that the second they smell something burnt, they're gonna not trust anybody or anything. So, right? So I'm thinking through the transaction from the beginning to the end, by the time you and I say congratulations, your offer accepted. I've already thought about all the players, all the steps, my checklist of items, but just like a recipe, I'm gonna adjust, right? Because when's the last time you had an escrow go the way you thought it was gonna go? Almost never. Never. But there's always a surprise. Yeah. There's and that's, always something new. Yeah, and a great realtor is like a great chef. You, you, you're light on your feet, you adapt, you have a, I call it mind tasting, right? I've got this database of flavors in my head. Same with, with real estate. I've got, we both have this database of like, people, profiles, reactions. Like I know this is a person who, like I said, is either not trusting or this is a person who's joyful and, but has a sense of urgency. This is a checklist person. So I'm gonna make sure we do things in a checklist manner, right? You're adjusting. The end recipe is delicious. The process was just different. Wow, you are the boss. <laughs> you are the boss. Well, as you were saying earlier, you know, I love when you said that. The kitchen is, everyone knows it, the heart of the home. And as we know in real estate, right? It is the heart of the home. It's where everything, everyone congregates around it. It is the central place for all good things to happen. We have joy. We have all of these experiences. All of our senses are tantalized in the kitchen. And it's one of the things next to location that really dictates the value of a property. Yeah. 
It really does. And it's really funny, too, because we even say, like, the irony is 60% of people may never use the kitchen other than to set down a takeout bag. But that's okay. It still has to look great, feel great. It's the place you come in after a long day, set down your keys, and pour your glass of wine. It's the place you have that hard conversation with the daughter you love or the son you love or the wife. You know, and it's the place where you nourish yourself and your soul. It really is the epicenter, you know. So to me... As a young kid, that's why I was like, you know, this eating thing isn't optional. So I'm going to make it the best journey possible because, you know, it's got to happen. So let's make it happen at a really high, fun level. All right, so check this out. You can kind of see what's happening here, right? It's starting to foam up. The cranberries are surrendering. They're just collapsing into the sauce. You see that? But see, now that's kind of saucy, right? We could could finish right here and it'd be a chunky, interesting sauce. Like a chutney? Yeah. It's a chutney right now. Exactly, exactly. And when this cools, Cools. I'm glad you said chutney. Yeah. Say it's it. a little, a little uh, con- um, condensed, right? Exactly like right. a gelatin, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. See, it's good that you know that because that's exactly because of the sugar. Hot, it looks like it's a little thin. The second it cools, it's going to thicken up. So you exactly, you want to stop it a little before you think it's ready. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slotted spoon here and just break these up a little bit because I like the idea of I love being doing that, in by the between. Way. <laughs> Yeah, right? When I'm making cranberry sauce, that's kind of one of my yeah. the fun parts. Not, yeah. not a blender. I like actually like popping them in there. Perfectly said. Like popping, you know, popping paper. Exactly. So let's let's go ahead. I already like the look of this. Check oh, that out. Still... Right? I think we're there. Oh. Look at that. You got you got that nice is, chunks, but you also have it still a little saucy. And just like I said, let's let's taste, right? Because the key is, all right, so blow on this. I'm gonna okay. a I don't lot. wanna Yeah, blow on this really good because I do not wanna have your off. lips be swollen for the holidays. You're like, oh, yeah, Josh, a great guy. Oh, my. Too spicy for you? No, that's delicious. It has just, like, it finishes with a little bit of, like, uh. Perfectly said. It creeps up. You're like, this isn't it's so like, bad. Whoa, yeah, hey. It's like, hey, hey, yes. But then the mint comes in like a little the culinary sweat. firefighter and just cools your tongue down, right? <laughs> yes. And they're like, all right, reset. Let's do this yeah. again. Yeah, it kind of unfolds. Unf- look at her go. Unfolds is the exact word. Yeah, that's unfolds. exactly what it does. In your palate. That makes me so happy that you said that because that's the sign to me of a great sauce or a great meal. I always say it's the truffle fry, truffle fry theory, right? By the fifth truffle fry, you're like truffled out. It's like enough. You know, to me, a great meal is when you just keep wanting a little bit more. And when the meal's over, you're like, God, I'd love to have one more bite. Like that's the sign of a great meal. All right, I, so. I think, let me, please. when you put this on turkey, I would think also it draws that out even more because turkey has a little bit, it's a blander. And so when you put <laughs> this on top of it, you're going to just have a mouthful of flavor lasting for a while. You're exactly right. Yeah. And in a funny way, you said it perfectly, like turkey, I'm never like, oh, I can't wait for Thanksgiving for turkey. You know, I'm always like, honey, can we do lobster? And, you know, she's like, no, she's, she's the Iranian Roman I'm the American, and yet she insists on a turkey. Ugh, I love her. Just one of the many reasons I love her. But you're 100% right. Because turkey's kind of like, eh. You know, having this makes the turkey more exciting, but it also tames the sauce, right? Because if you put this on an already super flavorful piece of meat, now it's going to be like an explosion. No, this is like an much. accessory. This is an accessory. Well like on said. on a beautiful tailored suit. <laughs> I love that. There it is. That's, I'm going to steal that, by the way. This, yes. is, the, this is the culinary accessory yes. of Thanksgiving. Yes. So, it'd be a shame not to have it on some turkey. Should we do that? Yes, let's do I that. I roasted a little turkey breast for you. Yum. Alrighty, talking about it's fun, eating it is better. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, now the most important thing, if there's only one thing you remember for Thanksgiving, please let your turkey rest. I mean, if you have to have it done an hour and a half early and keep it at 140, that's way better than taking it out and cutting straight into it. Because when you do that, all the juice runs out, the meat seizes up, and that's how you get dry meat. Oh. Resting is everything, especially a big turkey or a big roast. It can rest for a solid hour, even two hours before you cut it. It'll be twice as juicy. All right? So what I did with this one, you know, you can do all kinds of fancy brines and stuff. I just went for a good salt and pepper crust. It smells amazing. You like that? Oh, my goodness. It is. My mouth is watering. All right, I'm, I'm just doing this to look very chefy. The knife's already sharp. All right, so here we go. And by the way, I love bone in, and that's why a whole turkey or even a steak bone in. Think of it as like the backboard for flavor. The juices bounce off that backboard and back into the meat. You know, a bone keeps it juicy. Whereas a boneless steak, a boneless pork chop, a boneless turkey, the juice will tend to not stay in and get the flavor of the bone. 
All right. So let's see I'm how. Learning so much. Let's see how juicy the skin is the best piece, right? If it was up to me, this would never hit the platter because that's going to go into our mouths instead. Look at that. Check this out. Get over here and tell me what you think. Oh. See the juice? I mean, that's what you want to see, right? If you see that juice, it's so sucky. you know you've done a good job. Look at that. Mm. All right. So we get some nice slices. I'm going to be drooling here. <laughs> Call your family real quick. Let's get them over here. Let's just get Thanksgiving out of the way right now. We'll be done. All right, so we're gonna put this on the plate. So pretty, little piece of skin for those who love it. And then I would just, you know, you can do this any way you want. You could put that sauce on the bottom of the plate first and have it be a little fancy, or we can just nap it across the top, you know. But I think, you know, back of the house in the kitchen, Lisa and I are just gonna grab a piece and pop it in our mouths. There you go. Give that a try, dip it in the sauce if you want. We won't tell anybody at the table that we double dipped. Mm. Wow, that is so delicious. Mm. I love when somebody has to pause before they can speak. Mm. That means we did it right. It's still unfolding. Unfolding. Wow. That's how it should be. Wow. I just had this thought. Do you know a great agent is like a great chef? Bravo. They really are. They orchestrate everything and they make everything smooth and seamless and end in harmony and joy. Well said. We hope you have the happiest holiday Happy and that holidays. your turkey is moist. And you have multiple offers on your house. That's a good holiday. Thank you, Alicia. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Truly. Another piece? Yes. I'll take another piece.